And what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Billy Max. So, our, uh, um, yeah, I was like a minute into my other, to this video, and then my wife just decided to start talking. Like, I, like, like I t she knew I was going to be recording, and she just started talking. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so um, if you all remember, um, thanks for those who have watched and have been watching. Um, I did like a whole series on the um the upcoming off season for the Dallas Cowboys. I, I was talking about the changes um that they should shouldn't make potential moves that they might make this that and the other. Um, and I went through the whole team. I even talked about the coaching and the front office. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this though in my front office video, but here is the main problem with the front office. It's not the cap. It has nothing to do with the cap. It has nothing to do with grabbing free agents from the bargain bin is as they say, the dollar store, dollar store free agents. It, it has not, it has nothing to do with signing their own and, and not grabbing, Big time free agents. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna tell you what the main issue with this front office is. And and we can also put coaching into this too. But the main issue with this team and the front office moves that they make is they misevaluate their team. And they're not the only team that does it. There are a lot of teams that give guys contracts that clearly don't deserve them or or let guys go go that clearly they needed um you know i was talking to my best friend um original um ballonomics podcast coming soon by the way and um yeah me and him were talking and i asked him I'm like man some of these teams it just seems like they they just like they don't know what they're doing and he's like yeah he's like yeah and he and he made this example. He was like, I mean, if you work a nine to five job and you have maybe several supervisors or several managers, you know who are the good managers and who are the good supervisors. You know them. You know which ones are good. And the other ones are trash. It's the same thing in the NFL, people. It's the same thing in the NFL. You have a lot of people who are incompetent at their job. They think they know, but they have no idea. And the Dallas Cowboys, in a way, I'm not going to say they're incompetent. I'm not going to say that. What I will say about the Dallas Cowboys and the way that they conduct business is they are too family oriented. Let, I mean, let's be real. It's, it's, it's hypothetical question. If you were stuck, if you were stuck on an Island, nowhere to go with your whole family, with your whole family. And you had to, and you was put in charge of, getting the jobs together who was going to go out and hunt who was going to cook the food who was going to um you know work on maintenance who was going to work on building a boat or or trying to get a, an sos signal out if you were doing this you Know exactly who in your family. If you're real close to your family, if you're not real close to your family, this might not apply. Maybe you can apply this to your friends or even at your job. But you know who's going to be assigned to do what in your family. The Dallas Cowboys don't know how to do that. They clearly want, you clearly want Ezekiel Elliott to be this, Workhorse running back, even though your second string running back is faster, stronger, quicker, more and more productive than Zeke Elliott. You still want Zeke Elliott to be that guy. 
Your you 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 your quarterback is not Tom Brady. No, I take that back. Your quarterback is not Aaron Rodgers or Justin Herbert. His arm talent, he, he does not have the arm talent like those guys. He's more of the Tom Brady, Drew Brees type, making making the best decision ac- and throwing accurate balls. That's who he is. But y'all treating him like he's the second coming of Romo. You know what I mean? It's they have misevaluated their team. Think about think about Byron Jones. The only reason they let Byron Jones go was because he do, he wasn't getting interceptions. Forgetting the fact that Byron Jones and the stats show this. Pro Football Focus showed this, even though I don't really care for them. Pro Football Focus showed. When Byron Jones is on the field, the quarterback's completion rating goes down significantly. No, we don't need him because he doesn't make plays. He doesn't make interceptions. Like, there comes a time, and, and this is in real life too, there comes a time where you as a person, you might not be the flashiest person, but you're consistent. And in 2022, it seems like people care more about. It seems like people care more about the flashy, the bright lights and the, the big stuff rather than the, the consistency. And this is the NFL. Availability is the greatest ability. Sean Lee will not go to the Hall of Fame. He probably won't go in into he probably won't go into the ring of honor. But he was one of the greatest. He he should be considered one of the greatest linebackers in Cowboys history. Because if you look at his numbers when he was on the field versus when he wasn't, it's night and day. It's night and day. Tony Romo is not a Hall of Famer. Tony Romo is going to go into the ring of honor. But he's not a Hall of Famer. But I guarantee you, if, if one, that was a catch, it was a catch. And two, if Tony Romo had a defense... Maybe, just maybe, he would have been considered one of the best quarterbacks in the league. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. To me, it's amazing. It's utterly ridiculous and amazing at the same time. The Dallas Cowboys front office has... No idea how to evaluate their players. They they have no idea. They suck at it. They suck at it. I'm just saying they suck at it. They suck at evaluating their players. This mind you, this is the same team. You had um um Martellus Bennett. You had Martellus Bennett. Backing up Jason Witten, and he couldn't see the field. This is the same team. This is the same team that had Kai Forbath, who didn't miss a kick, but cut him to hire Greg the Leg, who, who's going to miss. He, miss, he misses 33% of the time. I mean, it's a, it's a given fact. For every three field goals, he's going to miss one. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. This is the same team that paid Ezekiel Elliott forty million dollars, and the dude held out two whole years before his rookie contract was up. And has not has not played to that contract at all. This is the same team 
that that just knew Tyron Smith was going to make it all season long. Mind you, after he had already missed two holes, one whole season and most of the season before. That's why I know I said this in my other video. I would have drafted Rashawn Slater, period. Michael Parsons would not be on this team. I would have drafted Rashawn Slater with the quickness. Quickly would have drafted Rashawn Slater. Because our I knew our offensive line was not that good. Is I mean this is and and this is the last one. This is the last one. This is the same team that allowed Sean Payton to sign with the Saints instead of hiring on as the head coach after Bill Parcells left. I and and I'm very mad about that. And and for some of y'all older Cowboy fans, this is the same team that passed up on Randy Moss because he was smoking some weed. It's wild, man. I was going to say about Sean Payton, I had never seen this offense flow the way it did when Sean Payton was the offensive coordinator. Him and Romo, they were humming. They were humming. Do you hear me? They were humming. Him and Romo. I mean, I ain't never that the efficiency of that offense when they was running it. Boy, I ain't seen I ain't seen nothing like it since. The only thing that came close to that was in 2016 when Dak and Zeke were uh, were rookies, and a lot of that. You can and a lot of that you can attribute to to the offensive line. That was when the offensive line was on. I mean, it was hands down the best offensive line in football. But I digress. So the biggest issue with the Dallas Cowboys front office is they suck at evaluating their players. They suck at it. No, you know, I was asking a friend of mine. Um, this is when Steph Curry and Blake Griffin were in the draft. And everybody was like, Blake Griffin, Blake Griffin, Blake Griffin. And I kept telling people, no, you want Steph Curry. Everybody was like, why do you want this little ass point guard? I was like, because he can do the one thing that you he can do. He can do the one thing that will have him go all the way until he's 40, 45 years old in this league. He can shoot the ball. Shooting's never gonna shooting's never gonna go out of style. My it look at all the great players. They had to change their game. Michael Jordan could jump everybody out the gym. He could drive on everybody. He could do all of that, but he had to he had to develop a mid range game because teams was like just guard the hole don't 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 let him drive to the hole don't let him drive to the hole that's why he was that's why he was scoring damn near fifty and sixty points every other week because he just go to the hole and shoot free throws. And by the time, by the time, you know, they were winning championships, that's when he started, that's when he started developing that, that mid range game. So, you know, that's how I look at this team. You cannot go wrong with offensive and defensive linemen. If you win the trenches, your chances of winning these football games goes up exponentially. If you can win the line of scrimmage on a on on a t- consistent basis, you'll get better. You'll get better. You'll be a better team every single time if you can win the line of scrimmage, whether on offense or defense. Then we can complement that with a running game. 
then we can complement that with with shut down corners. Then we can complement that with a quarterback that can make good decisions. Then we can complement that with a high profile wide receiver. And I know some of y'all are saying, well, look at the Cincinnati Bengals. Well, Joe Burrow is different. And that's another thing. We have to stop comparing these quarterbacks to these all-time greats. If you really, if you really look at the league on a yearly basis, out of 32 teams, out of 32 teams, let's okay, let's let's think about it. Out of 32 teams, um, seven teams make the playoffs. Out of those seven teams on in each conference, that's 14 teams. How many of those teams have <laughs> transcendent quarterbacks? Let's think about it. Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers. Based on this season alone, Joe Burrow, Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford, Josh Allen. Six. Six teams. Six teams out of 14 have elite, had or had elite playing level quarterbacks. Six. These these quarterbacks don't grow on trees, people. You're lucky to find one. That's why a lot of people mad at Baker Mayfield, mad that the Cleveland Browns are about to pay Baker Mayfield. When's the last? Who? Bernie Kosar was the last great quarterback in Cleveland. Bernie Kosar was the last great quarterback in Cleveland. How long ago? And that's not even including the, uh, what, four, five, six years that Cleveland didn't even have a team when the team basically moved out and went to Baltimore. And that's how the Ravens became the Ravens. So it is hard to find a great quarterback. Now, I mean, that's why there's tears to this. It's literally maybe like Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen. That's it for those three. Then it's like, then it's the Joe Burrows, Justin Herberts, Russell Wilsons, um, at one point in time, Ben Roethlisberger. That's where those guys are. Then you get down to the regular guys, and that's where guys like Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins I did say his name second on purpose, uh, Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins, um, who are my Baker Mayfield, Jimmy Garoppolo. That's where those guys are. And then there's them that tier four, your Drew Locke, Jameis Winston, unfortunately, Sam Darnold. That's where those guys are. You know what I mean? So I just it's hard, man. It's hard. And I think we need to be a little bit more lenient. But that does not absolve the Dallas Cowboys from being absolutely and positively trash about their um about their offseason, about the way they evaluate their team. This game is hard, man. This game is hard. It's easy to find a running back. <laughs> it is easy to find a running back. It's, it's starting to be easy to find a wide receiver. It's starting to be easy to find um, cornerbacks. It's hard to find a safety. 
That's why if you got a good one, that's why it boggles Cowboys' minds that Darren Woodson is not in the Hall of Fame. He he is. I don't I, I don't understand why Darren Wilson is not in the Hall of Fame. That is, that is just blasphemy. If Steve Atwater is in the Hall of Fame, Darren Woodson should be in the Hall of Fame. That's, I'm, and I'm a, I'm gonna leave that at that. You know what? I've I've gone twenty minutes now. I'm gonna just go ahead and make this a podcast. <laughs> Dallas Cowboys kit podcast featuring Billy Mack. I need to give me some theme music. I really need some theme music. But I want to make my own. I want to make my own. But if any of you all watching, you make music, and you think you got some theme music for me, and you're not willing to pay an arm and a leg for it, I mean, you can hit me up. In other news, since I might as well, I might as well go 30. Yeah, let's see. I got ten minutes to talk about some other cowboy stuff. Let's 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 just let me just let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. So um I think this is just me, could be wrong. This might be the most disturbing Dallas Cowboys offseason we've ever had. I can I and 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 you know I was listening to 1053 the fan I was listening to 1053 the fan and they were talking to Bobby Bell If you if you're not follow if you are Mike Fisher fan you need to follow Bobby Bell okay They are one and the same they they both getting scoops out here And um the fan was talking to Bobby Belt, and Bobby Belt said something very interesting, and I like it. And he basically said in so many words, hey, this season, this, this offseason has been really different, and a lot of it has to do with the fans. The fans are sick and tired of this. <laughs> and we are. Like, like, I remember when they lost against the 49ers, me and my dad, I, I went to take – I went to take my daughter to her to his house and me and my dad was just like this 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 is getting old. <laughs> this is getting old, man. Like why can't they get it together? And and it harkens back to my original point. They do not know how to evaluate their team. They got guys in positions that don't need to be in their positions. Like, I mean, let's be real. Is I mean, let's let's be honest. See, they, these are the questions that they're not asking. Or or maybe maybe they are asking these questions, but you got coaches, you got these coaches that are just so gung-ho about their guys that we can't get an honest answer from them. This is the NFL, man. The Pittsburgh Steel, Le'Veon Bell was the best running back in the league. And the Pittsburgh Steelers said, nah, we good. He was statistically the best running back in the league. And the Pittsburgh Steelers said, nah, you ain't worth that much money. Dallas Cowboys ain't going to do that. They got rid of, but they let Byron Jones go because he wasn't getting interceptions. Who cares? The dude took away one half of the field. Ask Deion Sanders how, ask Deion Sanders how important that is. It's, it's, I mean, Paid all that money to uh, who we paid somebody a whole bunch of money, and they ended up just stealing from us. They ended up stealing a whole bunch of money from us. I'm trying to think of who it was. Well, let's go. Look, 
Let's go back to Roy Williams. Was Roy Williams worth a first round pick? Nope. Was Joey Galloway worth two first round picks? Nope. It's, I mean, this team, this team and the decision. Now, now I understand. I will, I will give, I will give the Dallas Cowboys, I will give them a pass. I will give them a pass. If I will give them a pass, if it's strictly because of cap, if it's because of cap, okay, you got me. We got to make a move. We got we don't we don't want to get fined. We don't want to lose draft picks cuz I I mean, I don't quite know what all the consequences are for being over the cap, but more than likely there's some draft picks involved. And one thing I will say about the Dallas Cowboys, we draft great. We might not do well in the first two rounds, but rounds 3, 4, 5 and 6, we be finding guys. Anthony Brown, sixth round. Dak Prescott, fourth round. Um, I think Travis Frederick was a fourth or third round pick. If I remember correct, he might have been second round. He might have been second round. Let's look it up real quick. Look, this is a podcast. I'm gonna change this into a podcast. Ranting about ranting about the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, Dallas Cowboys. Travis Frederick retired from the NFL. He's only 30 years old. Boy. Oh, boy. Da, 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 da. Let me see. Oh, damn. I was all wrong. He was a first round pick. <laughs> He was a first round pick. My bad. I just knew. I just knew he he was. Uh, I just could have. I could have sworn he was in the later rounds. I could have sworn he was in the later rounds, but oh well. Um, who was it? Michael Gallup was a third round pick. Let's see. I think Cedric Wilson was a. Fifth or sixth round pick. Um, let me see who DeMar- Demarcus Lawrence. Demarcus Lawrence is only twenty nine years old. Some bull. Demarcus Lawrence was a second round pick. I mean. Y'all remember Jay Ratliff? I think he in prison somewhere. Jay Ratliff, ladies and gentlemen. Jay Ratliff, seventh round. Seventh round, ladies and gentlemen. We got two great years out of him. The man made a Pro Bowl. Tony Pollard, fourth round pick. Tony Pollard was a fourth round pick. Let's see. Lael Collins. I'm just I'm just looking up stuff now. Yeah, I don't say. Ladies and gentlemen, Lael Collins was an undrafted free agent. No wonder it don't say. The Cowboys are great. The point I'm I'm trying to make is the Cowboys are great at finding people in the draft. They ain't gonna they ain't might be first and second round guys, but we good at finding people in the draft. Good guys that are gonna round out. The team, you know what I mean? But um, as my time comes to a close, I'm hitting 30 minutes. Um, 
let's review the points. So, number one, the Cowboys suck at evaluating their team. Um, there are no dogs on this team. There need to be dogs on this team. We ain't got dogs. We just got good football players, and that that is a part of why we keep getting bounced in the first round or why they can't win. It seems like this team just cannot – games that we need to – that was my doorbell. Games that we need to win, games that we need to have, this team is incapable of doing it. We win we win games that we're not supposed to win. Them are the games we them the games we we win. We don't ever win the games that we need. We needed to beat Arizona last year. We beat Arizona last year. Guess what seed we have? Number two. I wish I could turn that off. I think that's the grass, man, which means that thing's going to go off five, six more times. So until that happens, um, <laughs> until that happens, it's your boy, Billy Mack. I thank y'all for listening. Holla at your boy. Please subscribe, like, and subscribe, and share also. But it's your boy, Billy Mack. Thank you for listening. I'll holla at y'all next time. Peace.